Lawrence Warunge now a murder suspect watched the series before killing four family members and a mason, one after the other. And just like the character in the TV series played by Jody Coma, Lawrence was meticulous in all the executions. Inspired by the psychopathic assassin Villanelle, real name Jodie Comer in a British dark comedy drama spy thriller TV series Killing Eve, Lawrence Simon Warunge had planned to clear all his family members on Saturday, January 2nd. Warunge 22 was confessed to the murder of his parents, two siblings and a farmhand had described his parents to police as satanic and killers, had planned the murder for about three months. He had, however, told the girlfriend that there was something he wanted to do that would make them live in peace for the rest of their life. During this period, even as he watched movies, he also practiced how to camouflage and commit the horrendous act without being noticed. An investigation has revealed shocking revelation how the Makaba massacre, which aborted three times with the second last planned for January 2nd, was planned and executed. That Saturday, Lawrence tried to convince the girlfriend, Atito Teller, to drink and smoke bang in vain. He expected the girl to pass out as he rushed to his rural home and butcher his kin and come back. He had hoped to use the girlfriend as an alibi after killing his family using carbon monoxide. Detectives from the Homicide and the Crime Scene Investigation Units at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, DCI headquarters, on Saturday recovered crucial exhibits that has unraveled the multiple victim homicide. And the suspect has clearly been placed at the scene of crime with the de detectives now trying to establish the motive. The suspect had alleged that he felt neglected by the parents and that his younger siblings were also siding with the parents. He claimed that he felt that the parents were out to kill him, a senior detective told People Daily. First, the shoe prints impression at the scene of crime which were recorded and documented at the scene matched those of the shoes that were covered in, recovered in Mayumayu on Saturday. Detectives had, do had done documentation to scale and later confirmed the measurements and sole patterns matched those of the shoes recovered in Mahimayu. Though it was initially suspected that there were at least three killers at the scene, the probe had confirmed that the suspect was alone. After his shoes got soaked in blood, he removed them and walked in the house in, in his socks. He would later put on the shoes which were recovered in Mayumayu before finally putting on a woman's shoes. He bought the lady's shoes in Theka. Detectives have managed through and thorough probe the suspect's confession to establish what transpired that fateful, that fateful day. Warunge asked the girlfriend to buy for him knife in Theka. The nine-inch knife with a metallic handle was among the exhibits recovered on Saturday at Theka. The suspect also bought a pair of trousers, a jacket, a lady's shoes, a piece of wigs, and female doll. He later cut off the doll's head. From Thika, the suspect proceeded to Nairobi CBD where he visited Uhuru Park and Holy Family Basilica. Fearing that he could be searched at the church, he proceeded to one of the supermarkets where he deposited his luggage which were in a red carrier bag containing the things he bought plus the knife. He left the supermarket with the luggage tag, leaving his bag behind, and proceeded to the church. At around 4 p.m., he went and boarded a Limuru-bound passenger vehicle, and on reaching Limuru, he took another vehicle home in Wangunju, Kiamba. On reaching home, he found James Kinyanjui and asked him for a metal bar. He, however, did not disclose what he wanted to do with it. At one point, he was very nervous, and when the deceased asked him, he simply said he had a lot of stress without expounding. He would later catch Kinyanjui unaware and hit him at the back of the head several times before he cut his throat using the knife he had earlier bought in Thika. According to him, he decided to slit Kinyanjui's throat after he refused to die. A blood spatter analysis would later confirm that the blood pattern on the wall curtain emanated from a high-pressure vein the throat. Warunge remained around the initial crime scene until around 8 p.m. when he saw his father was driven home in a taxi. Shortly thereafter, he scaled the perimeter wall. He got shocked by the electric fence but still managed to get into the compound. The father had brought home some bottles of Balozi beer, some of which were recovered in the house, the secondary scene. While in the compound, he saw the mother in the kitchen and proceeded to the main switch and disconnected the power. 
he had some paraffin which he sprinkled on a green paper bag and set it on fire outside the kitchen door. Curious to know what was happening, the mother got out and he hit her at the back of the head with the metal bar. The brother who had the commotion rushed at the door, oblivious of the impending danger, was also attacked. The mother fell down unconscious while the injured brother rushed back to the room. All this while the father who was taking some beer in the bedroom upstairs was not aware that the family was under attack from their own son. Shortly thereafter, on sensing some commotion, he went downstairs but met the son armed with a knife. He ran back but the son followed him. Fearing for his life, he jumped from the bedroom balcony, he got injured and the son followed him where he stabbed him several times before slitting his throat. He would later hear the father attempting to open the gate to escape. He pursued him and stabbed him even more, leaving him with his intestines out. Investigations revealed that at this point he was only on his socks as he had removed his blood-soaked shoes. He then killed one of his brothers, Maxwell Njenga, a class 7 pupil at Wangunyu Primary School and went room for, to room looking for the other brother. He found the brother Christian Njenga hiding under his bed in his room. The younger brother pleaded with him to spare his life. He would hear none of that and stabbed him several times before slitting his throat. After killing the family members, he showered and ate the food the mother was preparing and later sat down and watched a program of television. He slept on his father's bed until around 4 a.m. when he woke up and asked for a lift in one of the de delivery vans. He went to Naivasha and later went to Maimayu, the rural home of his girlfriend who was by then in Thika. There he burned some of his clothes and the mod mobile phones belonging to his parents which he had collected from the house. He later went to Lower Kabete where he was arrested. The suspect who has since been arrested has not panicked or shown any remorse. He told detectives that he was shocked to see family members crying and mourning the deaths. He bought some paper which he would bite or spray in order to tear, to tear to appear like he was also mourning. The exhibit recovered had been thrown in a pit latrine. He even took detectives to an open field in the same area where he burned some of the evidence. The father had arrived from in Kenya from the United States about a fortnight earlier where he worked as a nurse. Two of his daughters survived the cold-blooded murder since they had gone to school the previous day. One of the sisters is a Form 4 at St. Angela School while the other one is a Form 2 at Ngiriambu Girls in Kirinyaga. The suspect said that he had read a book and watched a movie. That is how he planned his murders. Listen to what the movie is all about. Killing Eve, a TV series released in 2018, features Villanelle, who is depicted as a very talented murderer, mercurial in mood. Are you upset? This is the violent storyline that is spread across the three-part series made up of 24 episodes, just enough to inspire one of Kenya's most gruesome murder stories. Lawrence Warunge, now a murder suspect, watched the series before killing four family members and a mason, one after the other. And just like the character in the TV series, played by Jodie Comer, Lawrence was meticulous in all the executions. Lawrence told police that he had been planning his murderous actions for three months. He was also reading two novels, one titled Eight Perfect Murders and the other The Eve of Murder. One critic has said this about Eight Perfect Murders. Probably what you need right now is a good murder mystery, one that is bookish, engrossing, not overly gory and impossible to solve. One person who has read The Eve of Murder has said that the book is fast moving. The storyline is also very predictable. Keep it locked here on my channel. I will be updating you on how this story will go. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing and turning on your notification bell.